yeah, I mean, such a such a loss with Tupac passing. Uh, so so young, so much work under his belt by 25 years old. And you know, imagine if Tupac was alive today, like how he'd be influential in politics. Uh, how he he probably would be the first hip hop billionaire uh, by this time. You know, before everyone else. That's very um, true. Yeah, I mean, very very sad. Yeah, you let you let you let some of these motherfuckers tell it. He would they they didn't know his vision. He I remember um, you know um, he was like forty. Oh, you know we were talking, and then he just uh, oh forty forty before we get off the phone, I meant to tell you. He say um he say man look you know how they got uh, Planet Hollywood. He said, I want to do I want to do the same kind of concept, but I want to call it Gangster Cafe. You might want to you understand me put your bid in. You you might want to you know you might want to invest in this. I'm gonna get all the all the people I fuck with, and I want it to be called Gangster Cafe. We have pictures of Al Capone, you know, all the gangsters, Lucky Luciano, like you know what I'm saying, Gotti, whoever, you know what I'm saying, whoever was gangster at the time, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So that was one of his visions, and that, and you know, I can see that happening. You know, I can, I can see that. You know, um, um, who wouldn't want to come to Gangster Cafe? You know, with some good food. I mean, the Planet Hollywood uh, at that time, the way they formatted this stuff, you know, that was Pac's vision, one of his visions. You know, he's he's very smart, and he'd be front line right now. He'd be front, he'd be front line during these protests. Oh my God. Come on, man. You know what he stood for, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in fact, I interviewed uh, Chris Carroll, who was the first responder that showed up at the scene in Las Vegas after he got shot. And he was trying to get Pac to to confess who who, sh who shot him to try to, you know, get a something called a death confession. And when Pac realized that he was talking to the police, you know, he was all bloody, you know, blood covering his jewels and everything else like that. He looked at the cop and said, fuck you. And then he slipped into a coma. And that was the last thing he ever said. So Pac's last words were, fuck the police. I looked at him once again. I said, what happened? Who did this? Who shot you? And now he's looking at me. So we're looking at each other in the eyes. And this is kind of the first time he's even acknowledging my presence. And, uh, he looked at me and I could tell he was, you know, he was getting a breath together to tell me. And he looked me right in the eyes and we looked at each other and he said, fuck you. And he said it just like that with an emphasis on that F to, you know, to really let me know. Uh, that's how we felt. So that's, that's how serious Pot lived his life. It wasn't just a rap. He was, he was about his people, man. He was serious about his people and he talked out about it. You know, he loved his people and he was real. He was real, man, ahead of his time. 25 years old, did so much in so little time. And you you know, some of these people just don't realize well, all the stuff he did, man. The man was in movies and stuff. You know, he wrote poetry. He did, he, sp he, he spoke for, for the people. He spoke for the swell. The, the females loved him. And I ain't talking about just as a sex symbol or whatever, just because he was a great rapper, they, uh, you know, because of his status. No, he spoke to them too. Dear mama, Brenda's got a baby, so on and so forth, man. You feel me? Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. The goat. Yeah, I mean, he is. The, the goat, which is why to this Boy. day, you know, you can't make a, a top five list without putting Tupac on top somewhere there. Come on, that's real spirit. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't put him in there, you just a straight up, Hater with a voltage regulator.